This, of course, is Luke Rockhold. Luke Rockhold uh, was, again, like I said, a champion in Strike Force. currently ranked, it looks like, the number eight middleweight in the world, too, by Sure Dog. And, Luke, thanks so much for joining us today on the MMA Fight Corner. How are you, bud? Luke. Luke. Luke, you're on with us here on the corner. How are you, bud? Yeah, 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 I'm here. Fine. Uh, all right, thanks, back. man. Well, we some complications, but now I'm back. <laughs> we were just talking here on the corner about how exciting it is. The UFC Fight Pass is, of course, debuting with a two-month free trial, and, and Heidi Fang had brought up a great point. They have Strike Force fights on there, and how exciting it would be to go back and watch some of your old fights on there, too. So are you really excited about UFC Fight Pass, too? I mean, I know you're a fighter, but you're also a fan, man. Yeah, no, I'm definitely a fan and a fighter, and uh, it's cool to have that on there, but I'm focused on, on uh, making a new storyline here in the UFC and, and, and having some, some great fights here. Yeah, speaking of which, you have uh, Costa Filippo coming up, UFC Fight Night 35 in Duluth. Uh, how important and key is this fight for you in the middleweight division? Uh, it's, it's obviously a big fight. You know, this is uh, my second UFC fight. My debut didn't go as I planned, and uh, you know, I, you know, I, I'm tired of my Strike Force highlights. I want to make some UFC highlights and be on the right side of it. For sure. So that desire obviously is definitely behind you to get a win. Uh, how has the recovery gone for you from that injury? I know that you, I think, had a knee injury after the Belfort fight. Yeah, yeah, I had a knee injury. It pulled me out of the Tim Boach fight. I tore my MCL like a 50 to 60 percent tear so uh it was about six weeks before i started boxing and then about eight weeks and then i was kicking and uh you know it's, it's a long time since and, and I, I don't feel it i don't think about it and uh my, my body you know feels great i uh i took the rehab seriously and did everything i needed to and you know, I'm, I'm fucking i'm ready to go Luke, you came in the UFC with, with, with high hopes and big expectations. You were the main event against Vitor Belfort on UFC on, UFC on FX. Uh, that fight, of course, didn't go your way. But how does it make you feel that, you know, in your debut, you're a main event fighter, and it doesn't go your way, but in your second fight, they bring you back to the back to the cage, and again, you're main eventing a show. I, I don't think I've really seen any t- too many fighters whose first two fights back-to-back, you know, especially the first one being a loss, uh, get that main event spot. So it's got to show you that promotion's got a lot of confidence and, and promise in, in your potential. Yeah, no, it feels good. And uh, I'm, I'm looking to perform, and uh, I'm taking this seriously. I know there's a lot of eyes and spotlights on me, and, you know, it's, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to take advantage of the second opportunity and, uh, and show them why, you know, they have, you know, so much faith in me. And uh, I, I feel real good, and uh, I'm, I'm just focused on what i got to do. How much um, has it affected you at all this year, only being able to fight just one time? And, you know, before that, in uh, 20, 2012, sorry, I couldn't get that one out, uh, you had just fought a couple of times. So how much desire do you have to really want to go forward and get more fights in, you know, in 2014? I have a lot of desire. I, I just turned 29, and uh, it's kind of a reality check, you know, seeing 30 around the corner and and, and uh, just knowing your window can close at any time in the sport, and uh, I want to start stacking some cash and, and uh, making making a retirement. I believe I'm good enough, and you know, to be the best and, and make a retirement out of the sport, and that's my goal. And so I need to start picking up my pace and fighting more, and and uh, not too much, but you know, I say like a good two, three times a year, be pretty solid. But uh, <laughs> I like my off time. I think it's good. I think it refreshes me. But uh, one time a year is, is crap. I need to. I'd love to get in there like about three times a year. It'd be awesome. Well, Luke, moving forward, you're taking on Costa Filippo here at, uh, at Fight Night 35. What are your thoughts on him as an opponent, and what are your keys to getting that victory in that fight? Costa is a tough dude. Um, he's, he's had a lot of good fights in the UFC. He's uh, shown real sharp boxing and, and uh, power in his hands and, and good takedown defense in, in a lot of fights. Uh, he, he didn't have his best performance his last outing, but... Uh, I think too many people look at those last performances and judge them by the last fight. I think that's, uh, that's, you know, it's not how it should be done. I mean, people have off days and anything can happen. So I'm expecting, you know, a solid cost of fill, but the best I've seen. And, and I always train for, for the best guys, but, uh, you know, I mean, definitely is his, his strengths are, are, are his boxing and, you know, he controls the distance and that's pretty good takedown defense. So, you know, those are things to watch out for other than the fact that he, 
you know, I think he bicks his head so clean and he tries to get a nice glare off it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm a little he might try to shine, shine me out. And, blind you, know, you as you're punching? Me. Blind me, yeah, I know, especially with my height. I see him, how he gets kind of fine, tries to find that angle and get you, you know. <laughs> Snipe you out, so I, I might even have to put some paint underneath my eyes, come on a baseball style, and go whoop some ass. <laughs> you got the black, the black lines under the eyes there to reflect the glare. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm thinking about it truly. <laughs> well, hey, look. Luke, uh, last time we spoke with you at the middleweight division looked a lot different. Anderson Silva was the champion. So now that we have Chris Weidman wearing the crown, what are your thoughts on him as champion and? How many fights away do you think you might be before you get that matchup for the championship? Uh, you know, Chris is a solid dude. I, I like Chris. He's a friend of mine. Um, he's got great wrestling, and, and he just keeps improving. He looked a lot cleaner to, from just as that last outing with Anderson. I mean, his, his jab and his uh, he just looked faster, more you know, more composed, and uh, you know, he's he's dangerous everywhere. He's one of those. Guys, that's just good everywhere. So you got to watch out for those guys. And, uh, you know, I believe I'm, I'm, I'm in the mix and, you know, a solid win here and put me into a big fight and, and another win could potentially launch me into, you know, that title contention. So, uh, I'm con, you know, I'm confident in my abilities and, and with any of these guys, the middleweight division is, is deadly right now. There's, there's so many good guys coming in. I mean, Machida came down and Musashi's coming back and yep. Jock Ray is, is dangerous as hell. I know that. Kennedy's a tough dude, uh, and, and there's a lot of guys, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just focused on what I got in front of me. Coming off that, that, that freak, freak ending at UFC 168, Anderson Silva shattering his femur, breaking his bone uh, by, by uh, um, getting the leg kick checked. Does that make you nervous or apprehensive to throw some leg kicks coming into this fight? Wow, man, I'm always nervous about throwing inside leg kicks. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> like throwing them in training. <laughs> <laughs> Being a southpaw versus an orthodox fighter, that leg kick is it's so easy to check, and it comes from like you you really have to commit to it if you want to land it and throw it hard. Otherwise, you know they'll see it coming. So it, it's oh, I just I don't like it. <laughs> I'll tell you, I've, I've hurt my leg plenty, plenty of times with full pads on, and uh, I'll pick my spots real well. You know if I'm actually going to throw it or use it as a setup or something. But yeah, I, I've I don't know. I, I have different kicks and different plan for this fight, no doubt. Yeah, the inside leg kick's always dangerous uh, when you're a southpaw, but then you you also have uh, a great opportunity with that with that head kick because he's you know there's no there's, the defense isn't the same. You don't have to clear the shoulder, so you got a straight path straight to that chin. Um, do you see any opportunities? Do, you know, watching film on Costa Filippo, do you think he's susceptible to that kind of kick? Yeah, I mean I've seen him. He doesn't block that well to the head, but you know there's also a straight path to the liver and uh, liver. I'll be <laughs> I love my liver shots. I'm not gonna lie, there's nothing like putting the liver kick on somebody. Uh, I've dropped many people with that, so you know I'll be I'll be mixing my kicks up real well. And uh, you know if he's if he's blocking one area, he's gonna get hit in the other area. So I think kicks are obviously a huge part of this fight. I can control the distance. I got powerful kicks, and I haven't seen him block too well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be firing him off and try to you know break his arms if he tries to block him too. Aside from the kicks, though, you're also a solid wrestler. Do you think Carmont, I mean, we've seen Car- Costa Filippo have, have, you know, solid takedown defense in the past, but Carmont did a great job of just, you know, bullying him against the cage and working his double eight from there, putting together some chain wrestling. Do you think that's a weakness in his game that you can expose as well? No doubt. I mean, he, he showed weaknesses, but, but I've also seen him against other guys in the past and he's, he's done fairly well with his takedown defense, but, Carmont did the, have his way and, and fine. He, was, he had good timing in the middle of the cage, to tell you the truth. He was making him, you know, think like he was going to strike with him, and all of a sudden, he, you know, he timed in and hit hit his shots perfectly. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to mix it up. I think you can't telegraph your takedowns. The guy's short, stocky dude was strong, so he could he could jack you up and get you off his legs pretty quick if you do that. So, uh, you got it's all about timing in MMA. I mean, it's not always the best wrestlers. It's about the ones with the best timing. You know, look at, like, Demetrius Johnson. I mean, the guy's got the most amazing timing for his takedowns I've ever seen. So, uh, I mean, you just got to pick your spots and, and make them think that you're going to come at them in different areas and then and mix it up. So uh, I definitely have seen that fight, and, and I'm, it's in my head. And uh, I, I know my jiu-jitsu game is, is one of the best in the world. So 
I'm, uh, if I get on them, it's going to be hell. I'm, the, I'm I have the killer instinct, and I'm not going to be laying on them. I'm really looking to fire if I am on them. When you come into a fight, are you coming in with a set game plan? Like this is this is what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to execute A, B, and C. Or is it more kind of like you've got things you're looking for, and you go out there and just try to flow and create some opportunities? It's kind of both. I mean, you always got to be able to fall back on something. But I definitely do my homework and I study and, and I come in there with a pretty pretty. You know, I want to feel them out first. A lot of times, sometimes I don't respect people and they're striking, and I just come forward. You know, I've done that in the past, and I, I, you got to, you know, I, I'm kind of changing my mood. I, I'm just a lot better in the gym, and, and as a fighter, when I when I wait and find my timing and then it, then really unload and, <clears throat> and cut cut guys off and, and do my thing. So uh, I'm definitely going to find my, my timing and then uh, and then start cutting them off, pressuring them, and, and, and using my game plans. You know, you fall back, A, B, C, and, and all that, or, or you know, in, in the end, if the game plan doesn't work, then... I'm a fighter. I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna follow my instinct and then just go after it. So, Luke, this is come together. totally off the beaten track here. But I was just curious if you were all uh, upset about killer clowns from outer space being removed from Netflix. What? That was on the list. <laughs> yeah, it got cut. And yeah, for those of you who I don't heard know, about the cut, but I didn't. Uh, really? Yeah, really. Killer clown. I'm going to have to have a word with Netflix about that one. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, I brought that up because Luke's dad was in that film. I, I was going to say, that's that's a really, really inside <laughs> joke. But, you know, you bring up Luke's dad here. And, Luke, I wanted to ask you, I mean, both your brother uh, and your father are pro athletes. Your brother's a pro surfer. and Your dad, Steve, uh, if my information is correct, played pro ball over in Europe. Tell me about the family that you have and how much you guys all worked with each other or helped each other, you know, train, get better, and really define and refine your crafts. Uh, I mean, we all are just a really competitive family. So, I, I mean, even my brother, brother Nate, had volleyball scholarships all over the place. His grades didn't amount to what he had, and uh, it didn't work out for him in the end, his injuries and whatnot, but... I mean, we're, we're really athletic and we've all, all us brothers and even my dad would push each other. And I remember many, uh, uh, wrestling matches going down in the kitchen. For some reason, it was always the kitchen. <laughs> my brother, Matt, was, was the oldest and, and he'd start challenging my dad and, and then we'd catch on and, you know, I'd, I'd go up the chain and challenge my other brother, Nate. And then and eventually I was, it was me and my dad doing our wrestling matches in the kitchen. So, uh, Moms would freak out, and all the girls would freak out. But uh, you know, anything we've ever done, ping pong is always the dangerous game in the Rockwell family. <laughs> uh, you know, basketball, we'd all get together and and, uh, and all pushing. You know, everyone's doing well in their in their respective sports, and so it's a uh, encouragement for everybody else to do their own thing. And you know, I've, we've all kind of found our own path athletically, and and uh, this is mine. And so it uh, it definitely helps to be in an athletic, competitive family if you're, if you're in you know, in the, in the world of sports. Well, I know why that stuff was taking place in the kitchen. It's because when you grow up with a lot of brothers, you are fighting for that last slice of pizza. <laughs> the last chicken wing, it goes down. Well, I, I tell you what, you, you speak of ping pong, the best ping pong player in the family still to this date. And there's tons of us boys. Is my grandmother. She's 83 years old, and that woman can play a hell of a game of ping pong. So I'm with you on all this <laughs> stuff. And Luke, I heard I, she's good at beer pong, too, your she grandma. She is not bad. You know my grandma oh. well, then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, she's GG for a reason, okay? She is the gangster grandma. We love her for it. Hey, Luke, we really appreciate the time today uh, on the show. We're going to have to step away and take a break. But, again, Luke Rockhold fighting in the upcoming uh, Fight Night 35. That's going to be coming up January 15th, so uh, right around the corner. Best of luck to you, my man, and hopefully we get a chance to catch up with you again here on the show. Right on. Thanks, guys. Happy New Year.